Hello, hello everyone. Good evening. Hope you're all well. Ah, yes. So I've been meaning to do this all day, and now finally, children are asleep. House is quiet, so I thought I'd come in. Um, and um, you know, I've been posting about soul plan readings all week, and that um, you know, I'm putting this offer out for October. October seems to be really, you know, high energy. Lots of you know, lots of things happening in the world. Um, and it just seems that now more than ever, it's really important to, you know, to really know who we are and where we fit in this big jigsaw um, of life, this game of life. So, um, yes, so I'm going to introduce you to Soul Plan Reading. So what is a Soul Plan Reading uh, and how does it benefit you? So if you're wondering if, you know, if you've got to that stage where you're asking those bigger questions of, um, you know, who am I? What on earth am I meant to be doing here? What's the meaning of? me what's the meaning of life you know all of that bigger picture stuff then um a soul plan reading is for you um it's you know we can do all sorts of clever things like read our genetic codes or our dna codes so a soul plan reading has been described as reading the dna of um, your soul so those choices that you've made on some level um you know to experience in this lifetime um, from both a worldly aspect, all the money, the career, the relationships, all of that kind of stuff. And also that spiritual aspect, you know, that inner you, um, that inner spark. That's what, what, what makes you feel fulfilled? What, how are you here to serve yourself and serve others? You know, where you fit in the world. And ultimately identifies your life purpose. So the highest expression of you in this lifetime. So if you were to, you know, this journey of life, if you were to, you know, move through all these challenges that life throws at us really embrace our natural gifts and talents um, and know what they are uh, to achieve our goals um, then you will reach this you know highest potential of yourself so um a reading basically reveals your soul purpose your inner spark that inner you um, and it's based on your birth name as exactly written on your birth certificate hello suzanne um and um yeah, so it's you know as exactly we've done your best because your your name has a certain it sets an intention out to the world. There's certain sounds and vibrations of the letters of your name that 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 holds a certain energy, and this provides the secret code, if you like, to um you know to your life purpose, to you know to to what you're what you're here for and i know it's going to be quite a difficult concept you know i chose to experience this um because let's face it a lot of the time we well we certainly wouldn't choose them consciously um but in terms of our soul growth what our soul wants to experience what it wants to heal and transform and move through in order to grow and just you know remember who we are because life can just you know pile on lots of layers so a soul plan reading really got, like cuts through all those layers of life and gets to that very core of you that very heart of you um so um the reading um there's you know there's 22 energies all together you know based on the assumption that there's the 22 energies of creation and if you'd like we choose to experience we experience all of the energies but we choose to experience some uh, more intensely if you like um, so, you know, it's based on your birth name and obviously we most of the time don't go around calling ourselves, you know, Deborah Mary Wainwright, for instance, which is my full birth name. We, we don't use our middle names. Uh, we get married. Um, we have nicknames or we choose to change our names or, you know, there's an adoption. So there might be more than one name. So all these are kind of overlays. Our birth name on the whole generally remains our dominant vibration and all the other uh, all the other letters add to kind of boost boost those energies if you like so for instance you know my name's deborah but i was never called deborah for whatever reason i was always called debbie um, and the energies of debbie are very much uh, networking communication travel um, and i was a journalist and a media officer for an international charity for 18 years um, and as i was kind of moving out of that thinking you know i love this job it's amazing but there's something more, you know, you know, there's something more now that, you know, I, that I need in my life. What, what is this? And I started becoming more interested in the therapies and, um, you know, complementary health and all of that sort of stuff and all of this lovely um, woo woo spiritual stuff. Um, and I was, you know, I was really cool, you know, really cool to just go back to my birth name, which was Deborah. And, you know, this has really brought in those energies of my birth name, my, my original name. 
the healing energies, very much channeling energies uh, and service energies. And of course, this is what I do now. So, um, yeah, so just to be aware that the, you know, what name you use and what name you're putting out there really does change how, uh, you know, how your, how your life works, because it just brings in this, these different vibrations and these different energies. So what happens, this code uh, from all the letters of your birth name is placed onto a star of creation. I'm going to show you an example of that here. Uh, and this is the star of creation of the lovely John Lennon. And we will have a quick look at his energies. Do you know it's not just a theoretical, um, you know, oh, yes, I've got that energy or that energy. This is like, we'll just look and see how it plays out in your life. So how it played out, particularly in John, um, John Lennon's life. Um, okay, so it looks at the energies in terms of your worldly challenges, which is this downward facing triangle here. Put the videos back to front, so you know, the downward facing triangle. Um, and it looks at it in terms of your worldly challenges. So, those things that we chose to experience um, on that level, you know, the things that may be a bit harder for us, you know, those, those constant patterns that we're in, or those things that we keep drawing ourselves to, or, or, or you know, things keep happening to us. Um, or we're just in this kind of, you know, energy that that's, doesn't feel very helpful after a while. Um, and so we also give ourselves, of course, lovely gifts and talents. And this is this energy at the base of the triangle. And when you um, identify what your natural gifts and talents are, you know them, but sometimes, you know, not consciously, we, we don't believe in them or we just, we just think, oh, you know, it's, it's so natural, we don't even notice them perhaps. So this energy here will help you not only move through your challenges, but also embrace your goals. So those goals that you that you set yourself um, in this lifetime. And then it's usually about the age of 35, uh, sometimes younger. Um, and sometimes for some people, never. You never start asking those big questions. You know, is there more to life? What, you know, what am I meant to be here for? Um, but, but generally it's around 35. And that could come from, you know, also from some kind of healing crisis, some big life event that sort of made you think, why, you know, why did that happen? What's going on here? Um, and then we move into this upward triangle here, which is the spiritual aspect of the chart. Um, and again, look in terms of the spiritual challenges, those things that, you know, may, we may feel are holding us back right now, just so we be can become more consciously aware of them in order to transform them. And again, we use our talents, to reach our spiritual goals. And ultimately this energy in the middle here is your soul destiny. This is your life purpose energy. And this is the energy of this, this highest, best version of yourself and what you can ultimately achieve in this lifetime um, by working through all of this um, area, all these areas of your chart um, and really getting in the flow of right life, really knowing who you are, really knowing what you're here for. Um, and just, you know, just knowing that life purpose so when life does throw those those curveballs at us we can kind of go back to our soul plan think okay this is maybe this challenge playing out or it's you know i can center myself more easily because i know now where i'm headed i know now what my purpose is and what the meaning of my life is so it just gives you that self-belief and when you have self-belief you um you know anything is possible Okay, so maybe we'll just have a quick look at um, John Lennon's chart, just so you can just see how the energies might work. Um, so John came in with this worldly challenge here, uh, and the symbol is like you know you can see it's like a you know like a box. So this is actually the energies of structure, assimilation, and harmony, um, and um, it's a beautiful energy. Um, it's a very um, counselling energy. It holds space for people. Um, it's about providing the structure uh, for, you know, the, the providing the structure and holding the space. So it's very beautiful energy. It can be very tricky energy and challenge, however. Um, it's a really intelligent energy. Generally, people with this energy are, are hugely highly intelligent, but it's a left field energy. So this may not show out academically. Um, it may, um, you know, they, they just see the world from a different place they see the world from a bigger picture from their own version and so in challenge it can be about you know making sense of the world you know and where you fit in it and you know sometimes can feel a bit lost and actually the polarity of this energy is um uh, is life and death so it may even manifest as you know loss in life loss of a loved one loss of, of, of something loss of yourself 
um, even. So that's how that can manifest. And it's also got this polarity of wisdom to foolishness as well. So, you know, a few of us are born wise and many of our experiences are there to help us grow into that wisdom. So in terms of John Lennon, um, his, um, obviously he grew up with the, his father was absent as he grew up and also the eventual loss of his mother um, is potentially, how, you know, is how this energy uh, was playing out in his life. Um, if we look at the worldly talents, he came in with this worldly talent and this energy here, this is the highest vibration energy on the planet. It's pure service energy. It's pure connection. And in this um, area of the chart, it's very healing energy. The number one of this um, energy is, you know, is pure healing. Um, and so um, uh, this in this position in the chart, you know, one of the traits of this, one of the positive traits of this is vocal expression. Um, and as we know, you know, we know John Lennon and, and how he was able to use his voice um, to, you know, to spread out into the world. Now, John's worldly talents here, you can see it's like a, it's almost like a magnet with two links on either side. So this is this networking energy. It's actually um, a catalytic energy. It's a master energy. Um, and it's about drawing people in. Um, it's being the catalyst. So, you know, the big campaigning groups, for instance, would likely hold an awful lot of people that have this energy because it's sort of a, a you know, a, a, a world changing energy, if you like. It's about making change and drawing people together to make that change. So working as part of a team. Um, and as we know, you know, it wouldn't be surprising if the other members of the Beatles also had this uh, this team energy going on that drew them together in order for them to create uh, the messages that they put out into the world. So um, on to the spiritual aspects of the chart. So uh, this here, no, this side here. Um, so here we've got the, um, if you look at that, I you like to see it's like an amoeba, so it's very sort of shape-shifting and, you know, it's very adaptable energy. It's actually the strongest, most powerful earth energy um, and it literally connects us into the ground and being grounded is, is uh, hugely important for, for anything, for, you know, for coming out of our minds, for feeling less kind of, you know, you know, uh, our thoughts are a million places uh, at once. This grounding energy can, can, you know, can be very calming um, and being grounded. If you don't do anything else, then grounding is probably the key thing. So this energy was actually in John's challenge and obviously the opposite of that. Um, is that you feel kind of, well, very ungrounded, you're very in your mind. Um, there's a certain uh, resistance to being here. Um, and, you know, in the spiritual aspect in the chart, you may be aware of this spiritual connection and that there's something big going on, but almost like not being that, uh, that bothered by it, you know, you know, the world feels too heavy. Um, there's a certain amount of resistance and, you know, this need to escape. And certainly John Lennon spoke um, quite openly about you know, his, uh, you know, various ways that he took himself off, um, if you like, out of the world. Um, but then he had the perfect antidote to this. So in his spiritual talents, he had exactly the same energy. Um, so this was helping him to, you know, to feel grounded, to, to be able to bring these real high spiritual truths. So bringing down, uh, you know, making sense of the world and bringing down very high messages, if you like, um, but down in a very real way that people could understand, that people could resonate with, that people just uh, just knew, just knew that what they were saying resonated with them. So it's a very real energy, very earthy energy. Um, and working through all of his challenges, moving, um, embracing his talents, his vocal expression, his teamwork, his magnetic energies, his, his kind of networking, drawing people together. Um, and his, you know, pure connection uh, to above, if you like, um, and but in this really grounded way, enabled John to really reach his spiritual goals, which is this energy here. And this is the energy of completion. Um, and in this position in the chart, this energy is very much about teaching from an extremely high level of truth. Um, and I guess you don't get much higher truth than peace and love. Um, and so John was able to, you know, bring these spiritual truths down of peace and love um, in a very real way, bringing people together, working as part of a team in order to do that. And John's life purpose energy here. Uh, now, this is a hugely expansive. This is the energy of love and knowledge and expansion. And this energy just wants to get bigger and bigger and bigger. It's about traveling. It's about, 
you know, research isn't, um, isn't a chore, it's a joy. It's about learning, 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 bring, you know, gathering all of this knowledge together and then this, you know, need to share it out. It's huge communication energy and it's about sharing out this information. So this um, life purpose energy strengthened all of the other energies into his chart. So he was able to spread his message globally, worldwide. Um, and draw people into that message so we could all hear it very loud and clear. Um, this, you know, the beautiful messages that he put out through his music. Um, this um, energy is also about very much about balance. So balancing your, you know, the physical with the spiritual. Um, and it's also the quality of this energy is sexuality. So, you know, bringing, um, you know, bringing that uh, into, uh, you know, into into the world. Um, and again, this is something that John Lennon was very open about as well. OK, so that's very briefly looking at how the energies may play out um, in your soul plan. So, um, the, you know, having a soul plan reading helps you identify the challenges, um, it helps you, you know, it gives you um, a really a much deeper understanding of why you may have experienced or are experiencing now what you have been going through. Um, it, it identifies your gifts and talents so you're able to step into that so you're able to embrace those and really start moving into that energy and that quality in order to help you move through any challenges and you know reach those goals that you've chosen on that level and once you have you know once you know who you are you know underneath the layers of life um, then it just really gives you a, a much better sense of where you fit in the world um, and that can make a huge difference. What's going to make you feel more fulfilled? You know, being in the flow of life, having that self-belief that you know that you're not just, you know, dissatisfied and uh, ungrateful. It's just that there's something that, it, you know, something that you're missing right now that isn't making you feel more, you know, fulfilled. So this will guide you into where, which areas are going to make you feel more fulfilled, um, give real meaning to your life. Um, and that's so beautiful. That's such a beautiful thing. So the soul plan reading also identifies, you know, potential limiting beliefs, which is always very handy to know. Um, and then through the healing that comes with the soul plan reading, um, you not only get a, um, you know, because I'm a channel, you get your personal message, which is that, uh, you know, very precious guidance from above. Um, but with the healing, you also align with your soul plan. So it kind of takes, you know, looks at your soul plan and whatever is going on with it, it takes it back and basically it's cleaned and cleansed and, you know, put back into its original blueprint. So all the layers of life are kind of washed away, if you like, or at least made sense of, because this isn't like a, you know, a one step thing and you're done, you're on your life path. Uh, that's not what life is all about. It's all about growth and, um, you know, and learning and, and, you know, really uncovering what is going on underneath all this, all this life. Um, so this is like the first giant step, if you like, uh, into really making your life, um, living the life that your heart knows, living the life that your heart desires and that you desire. Uh, so, um, yes, so I'm offering this for October. Um, at a special rate just because I think it's really important for people right now to not feel lost in the world and what's going on but that they feel very grounded in who that they are they are they have a very uh, you know real sense of okay I make sense to me um, and therefore I can make sense of life um, and I know where I'm headed um, okay so it's a real it's a real gift um, to have one of these readings um, Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you. <laughs> so I hope I'm explaining it uh, nice and nice and clearly to you. Um, so basically, you know, just identifies what's going on for you. So you can really step into your life feeling, you know, feeling with a, a deep knowing and, uh, you know, and kind of in awe of who you are. You're not just a physical body. You're much, much more than a physical body. You're so much more than what your mind tells you because our mind tells us these things that, you know, can really hold us back. And these are just beliefs and patterns. They're not real. So this really gets to the heart of you and that light um, that is within you. 
Okay, so um, thank you. And I hope that was interesting for you. Please um, get in touch if you're interested in finding out some more information. And as I said, if you are interested in having a mini reading and sort of looking at what energy is driving any of those worldly challenges you might be experiencing or have experienced, and that life purpose energy, you know, what is the energy driving this um, best version of yourself, then do drop me a personal message and I will get back to you you can start on that little path of getting to know yourself um, from a much deeper level um, than what we've either been told or what we've seen or heard and what we believe about ourselves which is generally not very true okay all right then have a lovely evening and i shall see you soon take care bye bye